Hey, what's up sports rehab experts? Uh, today we're going to be going over a video that uh, hopefully you find timely with everything going on currently now with uh, COVID-19. Everybody's obviously moving towards virtual assessments, um, telehealth. Uh, these things are obviously becoming more and more prevalent and popular to begin with even before this pandemic kind of hit, but now with it here, um, it's drawn our need and attention towards it to get really, really good at doing these types of services uh, as quickly as possible. So hope you find this video helpful. I'm gonna go over some key things that make a telehealth session or a virtual session useful and successful for you as a clinician. Um, so this is gonna be a two video, two part series. The first one's gonna be a general outline of everything that you need to do to be successful with this session um, um, from a clinician standpoint. Uh, the second one, the second video is gonna be a little bit more about the nitty gritty behind um, some of the techniques, assessment, exercises you might choose. But um, just the first one here, we're gonna talk about four main components to a successful virtual session as a clinician. So number one, it doesn't have to start out any different than what your normal sessions would. It's, it's your subjective portion to the assessment, your subjective portion to a treatment. You need to have the individual describe their pain and have a very deep understanding of what their description of that pain means. Uh, and, and then you need to know what makes that pain worse and what makes it better. You know, this is a virtual session, it, you know, use it as an opportunity. You can still have them show you what hurts. And oftentimes when they come into the clinic, they're describing a pain that hurts when they're at home doing something specific. Now they're at their home, you can have them do that specific task that bothers them at home. So use that to your advantage get some buy-in, get some trust, and, and know that the person is able to see a lot of value out of these sessions because they can actually show you exactly what is causing them pain when they are at home. Because, because a lot of times someone's pain isn't just, you know, I have back pain 24 seven, it's I have back pain when I do said task. So now have them show you said task. And realistically, you've probably already have been doing that in the clinic, but now because they're at home, they can show you exactly what they've been doing. And then a couple other questions I like to ask too is, you know, what, what have you tried in the past? Get an idea of, have they tried a bunch of different things and has it hasn't worked? So now you know, likely those things aren't gonna be beneficial. So now we can just put those by the wayside and get to bigger and better things. Or have they not tried anything? Now we know we can start at probably the easiest, simplest solution first and work our way up from there. Uh, and then finally, always I like to always end my subjective portion with, do you think that anything else relates to your pain? Or is that a good summary? Do you feel like anything else relates to your current pain? And a lot of times that question brings upon many things that they have maybe forgotten to ask you, or um, they think and consider a previous injury that they've had in the past um, that might key you into something. So it's a very useful question to ask. And then finally, just after doing all that, reassure the patient that, you know, pain is okay. Um, you've seen these type of pain presentations before um, and that we're gonna be able to work through this because ultimately the person on the other end of that virtual session wants to be reassured that you know what to do to help solve their problem and that even over a virtual session, you're gonna be able to accomplish this. So you have to give that individual some reassurance. Second part of the session, you, you go on to your assessment. Again, this should be done every day in the clinic. You should have some little bit of assessment that is, is done, even if this person has been coming in for five or six sessions before, you should still be rechecking some type of movements. Um, if it's the first time you're seeing them, obviously you're doing a little bit bigger of an assessment, but what this virtual session forces you to do, and I'm actually a huge fan of this, um, is because it actually throw, it, it forces you to throw out a lot of unnecessary and not that useful of information. It, get, it forces you to get rid of a lot of that motion palpation assessment that people love to do, forces you to get rid of um, manual muscle testing and, and special tests, which all that stuff can be useful to a certain extent. Um, but in my opinion, what is more useful to you as a clinician, this, is, this goes for in treatment sessions and virtual sessions in and of itself, is actual exercise itself. Exercise is gonna be the solution for this individual long-term no matter what. So if we can use an exercise as an assessment, that all of a sudden gets us into the actual treatment itself. If our assessment doesn't change the exercise intervention that we would choose, what's the point of the assessment? So why not just get into actually doing the exercises to begin with? So 
the exercise equals the assessment, the assessment equals the exercise. And you better have go-to exercises that you use for pain presentations. Now you've likely had a lot of different people walk into your clinic with a variety of different painful presentations. You should have that experience in the back of your head as far as, okay, I've seen this pain presentation before, these sort of things worked, um, so let's start trying these exercises and see how you do with them. Now, here becomes a big problem of what people love to do in the clinic is because they have uh, this unlimited repertoire of all these different exercises that they've seen on Instagram is they change all these different variables up and they add three, four, or six different exercises all at once. And they do that one session and the next session comes in and they do six different exercises. You know, you have no knowledge of results of what happened with that person because you didn't use a scientific approach when you applied those exercises. You have to control for variables when you are um, you know, performing a treatment intervention. You can't just add six different exercise variations into a treatment intervention and expect to know what went well or what went poorly. If someone comes back to you and had pain, you don't necessarily know what exercise that was from. Someone comes back to you and they tell them things got better, you still don't know what exercise that was from because you threw six different variables at them at once. If you do one or two things at a time, get really, really specific, now you have knowledge of results, what was helpful for that particular pain presentation. So get better at controlling variables with your treatment interventions, and that's gonna to lead to your knowledge of results of what's been useful, what's been successful and helpful in the past, so you can make better decisions in the future based upon pain presentations and commonalities that you'll see over and over again. Now, third key factor for a virtual session is, and really, again, this all goes back to things you should already have been doing in the clinic, but it's the ability to troubleshoot exercises. Um, I see this way too often where people, you know, let's, let's try a squat, let's try a, a push-up. Two things that certainly could definitely be an assessment for you at this point in time, um, having to use virtual sessions. Um, both are exercises as well, so they can be trainable, exercises that you give somebody as part of a home program. But too many times I see people, oh, I got knee pain with a squat or I got shoulder pain with a push-up. Let's hold off on that exercise for right now and let's just do something completely different and we'll come back to that at a later point in time when your pain goes away. No, it, you, you're a coach. You should have the ability to alter an exercise, see the technique, see the biomechanics behind an exercise and know how to alter that to make it potentially non-painful. Now, it's not going to work every single time, but you should have a variety of options in your repertoire as far as how to coach someone, cue someone a little bit differently and be able to see an exercise and the technique of it to see if they're doing anything wrong to alter their exercises, to maybe alter the biomechanics that would influence somebody's pain or maybe even take their pain away completely. When I see a painful exercise, I'm like, all right, I'm honed in on this thing. I'm trying to see if I can alter that pain in that specific exercise. Because if I've altered the pain with that particular exercise, because that exercise already involves load being an exercise and I change their pain and it's no longer painful, I can just have them do that exercise. And oftentimes I've just won right there because now their, their pain has gone away with a movement that was painful beforehand. I'm applying load because it's an exercise and I'm building more resilience, robustness for that individual. So you have to know how to troubleshoot exercises instead of just going and modifying or selecting a different exercise. You have to be able to do that. We'll get in a little bit more depth with the second part of this video series of how to do that a little bit more, um, but just know that that's a significant component to a virtual session as well as an in-house in, in session too. And then finally, number four, the home program that you give them. Now, obviously the components of this, uh, you know, two, three, and four, they've all been kind of similar. They all refer to an exercise. That's what we as physical therapists should be doing anyways, is exercises for individuals. So you need to get really, really good at it. If you've been handing somebody a sheet all the time with just these standard, very general exercises to take home with them, likely your go-to exercises, as far as what you would use for somebody for a home program, is pretty minimal at this point in time. You need to start looking at the exercises that you've been using in the past and see Okay, what are ways that I can simplify this and make it very, very simple for a person to do at home? The two reasons why I see people not doing things at home is number one, because you gave them way too many things to be doing at home. Realistically, it should be only doing one to four things max at home. Um, and that goes back to controlling variables as well too. If you're throwing 10 different things at one, you don't know what's helping, what's 
being harmful and you're not very efficient with what they're doing. And that's why they're not following through with it is because they have to spend 30 minutes doing with it at home. It's not very efficient. It's not very efficient use of their time and they don't see the correlation to how it's helping them so that they don't have any buy-in behind that exercise. They're just thinking they have to do this exercise because such and such somebody told me to do them, but they don't know and can't see how it is actually helpful for them. If you control the variables and you show and demonstrate how this has changed somebody's pain, which is another reason why I love having an exercise that's painful for somebody, because if we can change the way they do it, change the way we coach them how to do it, and all of a sudden it's not painful, now they're really bought in. They're like, hey, this is a really useful exercise. I'm gonna do this all the time when I'm at home. So people don't do their home exercise program because they're so general, there's no correlation between you know their pain and how this is gonna help. They can't see, really see the correlation there. Um, and, and then you just make it too cumbersome for them to do it at home, whether that's too many different exercises to do or the setup of it is too difficult or too hard or too cumbersome. So make it easy and simple for somebody at home and you need to have a bank of exercises that you can select from there. And that's what virtual sessions is gonna force you to do because you have to be able to get creative with how to just use body weight to apply these certain exercises. Now, someone, yes, they might have equipment that they can use, but you need to be able to have very unique ways of progressing, redressing activities based upon manipulating um, somebody's uh, lever arm, you know, short lever arm versus long lever arm, single versus bilateral activities. Um, you know, resistance bands are obviously a very useful thing that many people have. So how creative can I get with resistance bands for a variety of different exercises? And then again, can I coach an exercise that was painful in such a way that now all of a sudden it's not painful. And now you got all of a sudden that very, very useful exercise that is going to allow you to win in a virtual session. So those are the four main factors. We'll get back with a second video here about, um, some more nitty gritty technical sides of that because likely you, you got some questions now that have come up with these four key factors but these are the four factors you need to keep in the back of your head when you're doing any type of virtual sessions and I hope it really challenges you to when this is all said and done and you're going back to brick and mortar treatments with people really try to second guess or reevaluate what you're doing uh, in person with these people as well too because likely what you're going to be forced to do with a virtual session is get much more efficient with your time and um, that's exactly what you should be doing with people in a brick and mortar business as well too because one of the biggest complaints you hear about people right now is burnt out and a lot of that has to do with their inefficient use of time and management of patients in the clinic too so you use this unfortunate circumstance as a time to get better as a clinician and reevaluate and what you're doing well and what you're doing poorly at this point in time and, and get better all right, guys, that's it for right now. Um, we'll be back at you with the second video, and I want to thank you for tuning in. Um, again, we'll get into some more nitty-gritty stuff in that second video. Stay tuned for that. Hey, thanks for watching. Hope you got a lot out of the information in today's video. If you like this type of content, if you could do us a huge favor by liking the channel, subscribing to the channel, and uh, hit that alert button so you get notified when any new videos come out your way. Also, if you're a rehab clinician looking to take your clinical skill knowledge to the next level and seeing how you can better help your patients, visit sportsrehabexpert.com where we got a lot more information that can help you along the way, as well as our certified sports rehab expert course. This is two courses that give you a sports rehab residency or an orthopedic fellowship type education in half the time at a fraction of the cost. So visit sportsrehabexpert.com to check out these two courses. We have the Human Assessment Mastery course and the Full Body Treatment Domination course. And finally, maybe you aren't a rehab clinician watching this video. Maybe you're someone just looking to keep an active, healthy, mobile, athletic lifestyle without painkillers and frequent visits to the doctor's office. If you're located in Ann Arbor, Michigan, you're in luck. Just visit annarbor.physio and you can set up your appointment today. If you're not from around the Ann Arbor or the Michigan area, no worries. We do a lot of online video consultation services from people all over the globe as well, too. So you can reach us at annarbor.physio or at sportsrehabexpert.com, and we'd love to learn more about how we can help you out.